Mint post weakest coin sales in a decade as gold prices rise. That's the topic of this video today, that investment demand for silver and gold significantly fell off in 2017. That, that, uh, that headline, it didn't really come as a shock to me at all because that's kind of been the story for all of 2017, that investment demand, that, that US mint gold and silver sales were down in 2017. And, you know, I think a lot of people were getting kind of depressed about that. I think there's a lot of people that actually sold all of their silver and gold and totally gave up on the market in 2017 solely because of this or solely because the price uh, didn't go up as soon as they got into the market. I think a lot of people were very upset in 2017 in the silver and gold markets. A lot of people gave up. However, I think a lot of other, maybe maybe more savvy investors, saw signs like this in the market, that, that investors, the investment demand for silver and gold had significantly fallen off in 2017, and they got excited about that because the good investors over time, over decades, the good investors are those that buy assets when they're hated by the most amount of people. They want to buy when there's blood on the street, when most people are forsaking an asset, when they're giving up on it, when they're selling it. And that's mostly what 2017, that's mostly from 2015 to 2017, that's mostly what it's been for silver. And some, to some extent as well, gold. People have been giving up on it because the, the, the metal isn't going up according to, to their timeline, to, to when they want it to go up. And so they're giving up on it. But I think a lot of us, myself included, see these types of trends and, and we get excited for the price going forward because we know that usually assets do well after they've been given up on by the most amount of people. The good investors buy when when investment demand or the demand for an asset is low when the price is low they don't buy at the top they don't buy when it's close to the top or when it's already past the top they buy when it's low so don't get too down on this type of news it is big news that investment demand for silver and gold is down in 2017 the lowest since 2007 right before the the recession right before the great financial crisis but you know keep in mind especially in the case of silver there are a heck of a lot more more stackers, individual investors in silver, people invested in silver general in general, than there was before the financial financial crisis, before the recession, just because of how much uh, people's uh, you know ideas of, of money and government and the markets have changed since then, because of how much fear uh, the financial crisis and the recession put into people, and because of how much people just realize that they're a great hedge, they're a great uh, asset to have on hand, especially as fiat currencies are, are coming closer and closer to their, to their final death. So the topic of this video primarily will be me talking about why investment demand has fallen off in 2017. Um, I do want to say that I think 2018, there will be a rebound. It's not going to be like what we saw in 2015 or 16, but I think investment demand in 2018 will pick up somewhat. It really depends on what the metals do, what the prices are up. I think it will pick up that we're going to see a lot of people moving into silver again. I, I've heard, you know, I had somebody email me the other day. Um, I'll keep his identity. I don't even think I even know his identity, actually. Uh, but he's telling me, hey, you know, I have uh, fifty to $100,000 that I want to invest in silver and gold. Can you give me some tips? And this was in addition to other holdings. You know, he said he had most of his money in, in, in cryptocurrencies and in stocks. But that he wanted to invest a, a whole fifty to a hundred thousand. I mean, that's a lot to, to me. That's a lot to probably most of my viewers. Fifty to a hundred thousand dollars into silver and gold, physical silver and gold. He wanted to do it as discreetly as possible, and and um, he wanted to use it as a hedge. I was like, great. I mean, it's great to see people moving into this. I've seen so many other stories of people that have been in cryptocurrencies over the last year, and, and they're being somewhat disciplined in, in the sense that they put a thousand dollars in. Let's say they made they made five thousand or ten thousand or whatever. They're taking a majority of that and putting it into precious metals because they know they know that this cryptocurrency, that a lot of these cryptocurrencies are just in a speculative bubble. They don't believe in these over the long term. They're not going to hold a, you know, if they put in a thousand, it goes up to 10,000. They're not going to keep that $10,000 in there. They're going to take most of it out and leave some in there to, to continue investing in cryptocurrencies. So I think this trend is definitely going to change. Uh, I certainly think that the price trend over the last couple of years, kind of silver and gold trading in a range. I think that's going to change as well, especially in the case of gold, we've seen 
continually have uh, lower and or sorry higher and higher lows in each of these kind of cycles. Um, silver, I think, also has a very bright future in 2018 because of uh, the silver gold ratio being so high. I think that is going to snap back much lower. It's close to close to 80 to one right now. Um, I think it's going to go much lower to 65, 60 to one. But it could go much, much lower than that, and I think it should be much, much lower than that. It might take time, um, but but we've already seen that. Uh, since I t started talking about this a couple weeks ago about silver heading higher, we've already seen it make a move up from, I think, uh, mid-15s, mid 1560, 1570, all the way up to where it is today, something like 1720. So that's encouraging. Uh, but again, main talk of this video, why have so many investors given up on silver in 2017? Um, it, it's been a rough year. I've seen a lot of people just from comments giving up on silver because because they it, it hasn't performed as they'd expected to. It you know I think a lot of people expect that as soon as they get into an asset that should be valued much higher, as soon as they get into the market, they expect it to go much higher. Not realizing that that asset, silver in the case of silver, has a long history, or just, even just over the last couple of years, of, of people getting frustrated of it not doing what it should be doing because because of market manipulation because of suppression because of not enough people realizing just how valuable silver is so finally okay why was investment demand down in 2017 why did so many people give up i think one of the biggest factors that not a lot of people talk about but one of the biggest factors that had changed in 2017 from 2016 was who was in office here in the united states i mean you're especially going to see this in u.s mint sales because I think the, the biggest buyer of, of American gold eagles or silver eagles are going to be American citizens. And so American citizens are going to be highly influenced by the political situation here in the United States. And, you know, stackers and investors in silver and gold, they tend to lean uh, Republican or conservative. OK, we have plenty of, of Democrats or liberals here in this community. Um, and I'm sorry if I offend you guys sometimes. It's it's hard for me not to do sometimes. Um, uh, you know, we also have, I, I know that a lot of stackers, myself included, would probably lean more more libertarian or, or just say that, you know, I'm independent. I'm not a part of either party. But, you know, e even myself, you know, I do tend to lean somewhat conservative, okay? And so when you have a conservative in office, when you have a Republican office, um, that's basically people expect uh, the, the economy to do much better now that Trump's in office, that they don't need to so much worry about another financial crisis, et cetera. Never mind the last one happened when a Republican was in office. But, you know, that's another thing that people forget about that. Yes, I think silver and gold demand went up in 2008, 2009 because of the financial crisis, because of um, because of, of the recession itself. But also we had a, a Democrat in office. So I'm sure many liberty-minded individuals or just conservatives in general said that, you know what, I'm worried about the economy going forward. I'm worried about what this guy is doing in terms of quantitative easing, or at least his his, his administration or, or the Fed, which isn't really part of the government at all. But people, people kind of had that idea in their head. They said, I'm going to protect myself somehow. I'm going to start prepping, including by buying silver and gold. And I think we're seeing a reversal of that in 2017. We're having this Trump effect. Trump is basically causing people to to stop buying silver and gold or, or altogether sell it because they're thinking, you know what? I don't need to be worried about a recession or, or a major economic crash or an SHTF scenario over the next four to eight years. They're wrong, okay? Um, the, the economy is a not in a better shape today than it was. I mean, yes, the official GDP numbers, which which, uh, you know, Republicans would love to dispute when a, when a Democrat's in office, but nowadays Republicans in office, they, they, they won't dispute it. They, they're wrong, first of all, they're being manipulated. But just because over the last couple quarters they've been higher than the Obama administration doesn't mean that we're not due for a recession, doesn't mean that we're not due for a market crash. We are. I mean, look at the, the GDP numbers prior to the financial crisis, prior to the recession. They were fairly healthy, but... But we still had one of the worst recessions in, in U.S. history. So so that's kind of my, that's what I'm saying to you, those of you that might fit into that category. Um, things, you know, economically, uh, things aren't necessarily better now that we have Trump in office, okay? Uh, Trump himself or his administration, he cannot change all of these reasons that you you initially got into silver and gold. Um, he, he, can't, he has no effect over Fed policy other than who, who he appoints the Fed chairman, who, by the way, he appointed someone who is very similar to, to Janet Yellen, this Jerome Powell. 
He's no, I mean, he cannot bring down the U.S. debt. He cannot bring down the U.S. deficit significantly. In fact, he's likely going to significantly increase both of those things. Um, it's, uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not trying to dissuade you from, from voting for Trump or being a supporter of him. I'm just saying that his effect on the economy is going to be very limited, considering all the problems that we face. Um, that was a big part of, of why investment demand went down in 2017. Another one is is just pure debt. That the, the U.S. consumer is becoming more and more saturated with debt. Auto loans, credit cards, uh, student loans, uh, housing debt. Uh, it, you know, the list goes on and on. Debt has been, you know, rising significantly. In fact, that's a big part of why the GDP numbers actually been going up lately in terms of consumer demand and whatnot. A big part of that increase has been fueled by debt. More people taking on credit cards, more people taking on loans, just to to kind of fuel their 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 expenses. Okay, uh, because well, they're, they're they're getting close to that part point where they're insolvent, where they've taken on too much debt, and their income just is not rising significantly and they can't pay it back debt is a big part of why i think a lot of people uh, didn't get involved in stacking or or um stop stacking in 2017 because because uh they they realized that they have a debt problem or they just didn't have that disposable income anymore to to buy silver and gold it's a big part of why you know many people have asked on this channel before should i take out a credit card or a loan to buy silver and gold no i do not think that is a good idea it could pay off you know, it could pay off huge that you that you take out the loan, you buy a couple thousand dollars worth of silver or gold, and and you know the price goes up fifty percent or doubles in a month or two, or six months or something like that. And yeah, then then you'd be in the black. You you would have made a profit because you could sell it then, or at least pay you know sell enough to to pay back the initial loan. Um, but I highly advise you not to to take such a risky loan out, especially since you're you're betting on sound money by by uh, by debt creation by by creating debt and in turn creating uh funny money creating fake money so it, it, by principle it's just not a good idea but debt i think is a big part of why people didn't buy as much silver in 2018 especially uh, silver and gold as well um another thing in 2018 or 2017 i should be saying uh a lot of people were giving up i think a lot of people uh, got into the market maybe it was 2012 when they got in 2010 2011 2000 you know 14, 15, 16, they got into the market and kind of like what I said earlier, um, the market didn't perform as they expected it to. And so they gave up. It, it didn't perform. It, silver and gold didn't go up as soon as they as they thought it should. Uh, and so they gave up. And they, or, or what a lot of people, you know, I get these comments all the time, silver and gold will never rise because they're always going to be manipulated. Uh, no, I don't think that's true, that they will always be manipulated. They have been manipulated for some time now, but that doesn't mean that just because that's the case that they're always going to be manipulated. But, you know, for that reason, they're fine with, with giving up. They're, they're fine with, you know, I don't, I don't want to call them you know, weak, weak for selling out silver and gold for, for uh, stocks or cryptocurrencies or something like that. They're, they're not weak. It's just that, you know, maybe their investor mindset isn't the same as ours. Okay. Cryptocurrencies, maybe that's done well for them. Stocks probably won't do well for them going forward. Um, but yes, a lot of investors have been giving up. Another thing in 2017 was that a lot of investors, those that were more dedicated, more, more principled, is that they're already set. That that their goal was a thousand ounces of silver, or or, or uh, you know twenty ounces of gold, or whatever it might have been, um, and that you know they've been stacking since maybe 2013, or, or you know so, you know I've had people commenting on my channel that they've been stacking since the 70s or the 80s or something like that, um, and now you know they're, they're old enough, or or they just maybe they don't have that same income anymore, or they're just they've hit their goal. And they've, they're done. They, they say, I'm, I'm already set. I have enough silver and gold, more than I'd ever possibly need. And, you know, when, when, the, when, the crash comes, when the crash comes, when silver and gold go much, much higher, um, I can profit off of that. But in the meantime, I'm just going to buy a little bit silver and gold here and there. I'm not going to continue on this, this kind of frantic buying spree every time silver and gold go downwards. And that's, you know, those, those, if you fall into that camp, I respect you because you have been a very principled investor. But by meeting that goal, and sticking to it you know you say i only need a thousand ounces of silver well that's your personal goal and, and you're sticking to it and, and you're not going crazy into debt to, to buy another thousand ounces 
um, and you're not giving up on the investment either because you know just because it hasn't gone up in, in the couple of years that you've owned it. So I think a lot of people have already been set. Um, I think some you know in the U.S. mint sales specifically another big factor as to why it's been down is that a lot of people are just buying elsewhere. That the U.S. mint has kind of lost its allure compared to other government mints. I mean, some people are just going generic. They're just going generic silver and gold. But but even if they are going to a different government mint, they they realize that the that the U.S. mint kind of is is lame, in the sense that they do the every you know each year, it's the same design. I mean, the only thing they really change is uh, the the year on the coin. But but there's so many other mints that change their design each year and that adds to the collector value as a whole generally but it also uh, is just more entertaining it's more interesting for a lot of stackers to to try and get you know i want a roll of each year of 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 uh the the lunar series for uh the perth mint or or the pandas or you know sheet of pandas or something like that they like collecting them and they like to get a wide variety of them. They don't want their their 2005 American Eagles to look the same as their 2017 American Eagles. That's not all that interesting. I'm not dissing American Eagles because they are a, a decent investment as far as silver goes. But I think a lot of people are just going to go elsewhere. You know, why wouldn't I just go to the to the Canadian Mint where where they have 0.9999 silver four nines? I don't know how many I said there, but. But it's more pure than than the American Silver Eagles by by a smidgen, and and they have cool designs, you know. I mean, the downside to that is that you have the Queen on the other side. The same goes for a lot of Australian coins or, or New Zealand or or the Britannias. Um, but there's plenty of other cool designs out there, even besides those. There's some uh, out of you know Africa, and I, I, they're not really being minted by Africa generally. I mean, there's the South African uh, Krugerons. But but you know the Somali elephants or um, there's there's some other countries that I can't remember off the top of my head, uh, but they they have cool looking coins, right? And they change each year, and a lot of them um, don't have the queen on the other side, right? That's that's what a lot of people are looking for a cool coin that changes each year and doesn't have the queen. I know a lot of people um, aren't huge into pandas anymore just because of the amount of fakes that have come out of china or or they just don't support the chinese government but even for them there's still you know if they don't want chinese they don't want the queen they don't want u.s silver there's still other choices for them there's philharmonics for, from austria there are uh the the noah's arcs there's uh czech the czech republic they they've been put on a new one south korea has one um i think ukraine has one uh, maybe russia i'm not positive on that um, and I know there's more. There's there's the Mexican uh, Libertad. Um, there's plenty of choices uh, out there in the market. Much more in 2017 than there was in 2007. You know, it's the the choices are, are increasing each year, and so a lot of people are just buying elsewhere. They want variety. They're they're bored with the American Eagle. Maybe they already have a monster box or two, and they're like, you know what? I'm set for American Eagles. I'm going to buy something more interesting, something that might actually appreciate in terms of numismatic value much more than the than the american eagle would um the final reason that i think people were giving up on silver in 2017 or that the investment demand had decreased was that they were moving their money into other investments namely uh, cryptocurrencies and stocks okay the stock market for for larger investors more mainstream investors i think that was a big part of it they, they moved into stocks because the stock market did exceptionally well in 2017. I, it was in a bubble a year ago. It's in an even bigger bubble now, and it's going to be ugly when it pops. But they did well, and, and I think there was kind of that fear of missing out moving into the stock market. A lot of bigger investors, more mainstream investors, moved, you know, sold their silver, stopped buying silver, and put it into stocks. And you know, maybe their investments gone up five percent, ten percent since they got in. Maybe they got in at the beginning of the year and it went up, you know, twenty five percent roughly. Um, but but as a whole, I mean, that's certainly in a bubble. The other big one is that you know, uh, cryptocurrencies and silver and gold. I think there's a big overlap between the investors because because both asset classes are uh, decentralized. You know, I think there's kind of this mantra that repeated that mantra that is repeated that cryptocurrencies are are kind of fighting the government, that they're fighting fiat currency. And, and there's some truth to that. I, I mean, there's the problem. I don't want to make this about cryptocurrency. But, I mean, there's the problem that cryptocurrencies um, aren't aren't backed by any real asset, that, that they only have value because people are willing to pay uh, such and such, or people value them at a such and such price. I mean, same goes for, for any other fiat currency. Yeah, they have the advantage that they're, that they're secure, that they can be anonymous, that they're not centrally issued. Um, 
you guys probably know my my whole take on cryptocurrencies if you're still watching this video um, but but there have been a significant amount of investors that have gotten into cryptocurrencies in 2017 they've either sold their silver or stopped buying it and, and they've instead put that money in cryptocurrencies it's done well for them as an investment likely i mean it'd be pretty hard to lose a lot of money in cryptocurrencies unless you were somebody that bought bitcoin at, at 19,000 and and today it's at like 15,000 you know it might top 19,000 again but uh, you, you might have sold by now, but but especially a lot of the altcoins, um, Ethereum, Litecoin, Ripple more recently, uh, they've been doing exceptionally well. Um, and and you know my hope for 2018, I've already seen it some, you know, it's just anecdotal uh, reports. But in 2018, my hope is that a lot of people move out of cryptocurrencies back into silver again. You know, I'm not asking them for for them to sell all their cryptocurrencies. I own some cryptocurrencies. I own some Steam. Um, a couple other ones, uh, Electronium, a uh, Bitcoin mining contract. Um, it's not a whole lot, you know. It's it's a couple hundred and all. But you know, for those of you that that own thousands in cryptocurrencies, you've done exceptionally well. It might be a good idea to move some of that back into silver and gold right now, because as I kind of alluded to earlier, I think a lot of these cryptocurrencies are in speculative bubbles. We don't know how they'll perform over the long term in a bear market. A lot of you investors that are maybe in cryptocurrencies, maybe not you specifically, but those that have never even heard of investing in silver and gold, um, that, that cryptocurrencies are the first thing they've ever considered investing in. A lot of them probably have never been in a bear market for an asset. Um, I, I think it'll be a scary time when a lot of these ones, a lot of these, a lot of these big ones really start falling. I'm not saying cryptocurrencies um, are are done for when they start falling. I think cryptocurrencies have a bright future, but right now most of them are in a speculative bubble, okay? And unless they, they start gaining widespread adoption over the next year or two, um, I, I gotta think that the price is eventually gonna go down just because, I mean, most of their value is going up because of, of the suggestion of a future real world use for, for Bitcoin or, or for Ripple or Ethereum. Um, and that, that real world use so far, you know, in the first month of 2018, it just isn't there for the most part. I mean, yes, Bitcoin is accepted in some places. Yes, Ethereum or Litecoin or whatever is accepted by some merchants, some vendors. And yes, you know, some people are buying houses or cars with cryptocurrencies. But as a whole, they haven't really reached the, the level of penetration into our economy, uh, into our market, in, you know, into the wider market, the wider population that they need to really maintain that. So, um, I think it'd be a good idea to maybe take some of that out of cryptocurrencies. You know, maybe if you put five thousand in, you're at fifty thousand now. Maybe take forty thousand out. You you still have another ten thousand in cryptocurrencies. You can move that into an undervalued cryptocurrency. Keep some in Bitcoin or Ethereum or Ripple or whatever. Um, you could still do well in 2018. I don't know if for sure. You know, if cryptocurrencies will collapse or if all of them will collapse in 2018, um, you can move some into Steemit, too, um, or into Steam currency. That's uh, that's the um, that's a social media blockchain platform that I've been kind of promoting on my channel for some time now that is built on the Steam currency. I highly suggest, this kind of me rounding up the video, by the way, I highly suggest you guys join me over on Steam, uh, Steamit. It's a social media platform built on Steam blockchain, um, which, is, which is a great blockchain, by the way, in terms of how much it can handle in terms of, uh, you know, it, it would be prepared, what I'm saying, for all of the users on reddit or all the users probably on facebook or twitter to move over to steam it today you know it take a while to create their accounts but once their accounts are created the uh, platform certainly can handle all of those transactions all of those um interactions happening on the blockchain just because of how well the blockchain was put together how well the steam blockchain was put together um, but but it's a great network it's a great way there's a lot of silver and gold individuals channels over there uh, it's a great way to to get yourself out of out of youtube out of this kind of corporate controlled uh, censorship type of environment and move into a decentralized cryptocurrency type market if you don't like cryptocurrencies fine sell them for silver and gold right sell them for, for fiat and you know pay off debt or, or pay your mortgage bill or something like that. That's fine. Uh, but, but the great thing about it is that's decentralized and, and it's censorship doesn't happen often there. The only censorship that happens is is you know if you have spam, if you have um, if you have uh, some sort of um, somebody that's like trolling, if you have a fake account or whatever, it's censored by the people. Um, but you know if I'm over there talking about silver and gold, there there is almost no chance that people are going to start censoring me over that because most people over there are kind of they have a live and let live mentality 
right? Even if they don't agree with everything I say, although a lot of them do. There, there's a lot of liberty-minded individuals over there. But even if they don't, that doesn't mean they're going to censor what I what I say just because they expect that I wouldn't do the same to them, right? It's a great environment, a great platform. I highly suggest you join me over there. Um, it could be the alternative to YouTube if YouTube continues down its, its current path. But I'd love to hear your thoughts on this uh, video down below. Comment section, investment demand being down in uh, 2017. I think ch things will change in 2018 in terms of investment demand for silver and gold, as well as the price. Um, but, but you know, we've already seen that somewhat just in the last couple of weeks that, that silver and gold have been doing uh, fairly well. Gold's over eight, uh, 1300 uh, Silver's over $17 already. Um, I think they can go much, much higher for, for a couple more months now. So I'd love to hear your thoughts and stumble in the comment section. As always, thank you for watching this video from the bottom of my heart, and God bless. They don't buy when it's close to the top or when it's already past the top. They buy when it's low. So don't get too down on this type of news. It is big news that investment demand for silver and gold is down in 2017, the lowest since 2007, right before the, the recession, right before the great financial crisis. But you know, keep in mind, especially in the case of silver, there are a heck of a lot more, more stackers, individual investors in silver, people invested in silver general in general than there was before the financial crisis financial crisis before the recession just because of how much uh people's uh you know ideas of, of money and government and the markets have changed since then because of how much fear uh the financial crisis and the recession put into people and because of how much people just realize that they're a great hedge they're a great uh asset to have on hand especially as fiat currencies are are coming closer and closer to their to their final death so the topic of this video primarily will be me talking about why investment demand has fallen off in 2017. Um, I do want to say that I think 2018, there will be a rebound. It's not going to be like what we saw in 2015 or 16, but I think investment demand in 2018 will pick up somewhat. It really depends on what the metals do, what the prices are up. I think it will pick up that we're going to see a lot of people moving into silver again. I, I've heard, you know, I had somebody email me the other day. Um, I'll keep his identity. I don't even think I even know his identity actually, uh, but he's telling me, hey, you know, I have uh, fifty to hundred thousand dollars that I want to invest in silver and gold. Can you give me some tips? And this was in addition to other holdings. You know, he said he had most of his money in, in, in cryptocurrencies and in stocks, but that he wanted to invest a, a whole fifty to hundred thousand. I mean, that's a lot to to me. That's a lot to probably most of my viewers. Fifty to hundred thousand dollars into silver and gold, physical silver and gold. He wanted to do it as discreetly as possible. And, but also we had a, a Democrat in office, so I'm sure many liberty-minded individuals or just conservatives in general said that, you know what, I'm worried about the economy going forward. I'm worried about what this guy is doing in terms of quantitative easing, or at least his his, his administration or, or the Fed, which isn't really part of the government at all. But people, people kind of had that idea in their head. They said, I'm going to protect myself somehow. I'm going to start prepping, including by buying silver and gold. And I think we're seeing a reversal of that in 2017. We're having this Trump effect. Trump is basically causing people to to stop buying silver and gold or, or altogether sell it because they're thinking, you know what? I don't need to be worried about a recession or, or a major economic crash or an SHTF scenario over the next four to eight years. They're wrong, okay? Um, the, the economy is a not in a better shape today than it was. I mean, yes, the official GDP numbers, which which uh, you know Republicans would love to dispute when a when a Democrat's in office, but nowadays Republicans in office they they, they won't dispute it. They, they're wrong. First of all, they're being manipulated. But just because over the last couple quarters they've been higher than the Obama administration doesn't mean that we're not due for a recession. Doesn't mean that we're not due for a market crash. We are. I mean, look at the the GDP numbers prior to the financial crisis, prior to the recession. They were fairly healthy, but. But we still had one of the worst recessions in in U.S. history, so so that's kind of my that's what I'm saying to you, those of you that might fit into that category. Um, things you know economically, uh, things aren't necessarily better now that we have Trump in office. Okay, uh, Trump himself or his administration, he cannot change all of these reasons that you you initially got into silver and gold. Um, he he can he has no effect over Fed policy other than who who he appoints the Fed chairman, who by the way he appointed someone who is very similar to, to Janet Yellen, this Jerome Powell. He's no, I mean, he cannot bring down Mint Post weakest coin sales in a decade as gold prices rise. That's the topic of this video today, that investment demand for silver and gold significantly fell off in 2017. That, that, uh, that headline, it didn't really come as a shock to me at all. 
because that's kind of been the story for all of 2017, that investment demand, that, that U.S. Mint gold and silver sales were down in 2017. And, you know, I think a lot of people were getting kind of depressed about that. I think there's a lot of people that actually sold all of their silver and gold and totally gave up on the market in 2017 solely because of this or solely because the price uh, didn't go up as soon as they got into the market. I think a lot of people were very upset in 2017 in the silver and gold markets. A lot of people gave up. However, I think a lot of other, maybe maybe more savvy investors, saw signs like this in the market, that, that investors, the investment demand for silver and gold had significantly fallen off in 2017, and they got excited about that because the good investors over time, over decades, the good investors are those that buy assets when they're hated by the most amount of people. They want to buy when there's blood on the street, when most people are forsaking an asset, when they're giving up on it, when they're selling it. And that's mostly what 2017, that's mostly from 2015 to 2017, that's mostly what it's been for silver. And some, to some extent as well, gold. People have been giving up on it because the, the, the metal isn't going up according to, to their timeline, to, to when they want it to go up. And so they're giving up on it. But I think a lot of us, myself included, see these types of trends and, and we get excited for the price going forward because we know that usually assets do well after they've been given up on by the most amount of people. The good investors buy when when investment demand or the demand for an asset is low when the price is low they don't buy at the top as soon as they get into the market they expect it to go much higher not realizing that that asset silver in the case of silver has a long history or even just over the last couple of years of, of people getting frustrated of it not doing what it should be doing because because of market manipulation because of suppression because of not enough people realizing just how valuable silver is so finally okay why was investment demand down in 2017? Why did so many people give up? I think one of the biggest factors that not a lot of people talk about, but one of the biggest factors that had changed in 2017 from 2016 was who was in office here in the United States. I mean, you're especially going to see this in the U.S. mint sales because I think the, the biggest buyer of, of American gold eagles or silver eagles are going to be American citizens. And so American citizens are going to be highly influenced by the political situation here in the United States. And, you know, stackers and investors in silver and gold, they tend to lean uh, Republican or conservative. Okay. We have plenty of, of Democrats or liberals here in this community. Um, and I'm sorry if I offend you guys sometimes. It's it's hard for me not to do sometimes. Um, uh, you know, we also have, I, I know that a lot of stackers, myself included, would probably lean more, more libertarian or, or just say that, you know, I'm independent. I'm not part of either party. But, you know, even myself, you know, I do tend to lean somewhat conservative. Okay. And so when you have a conservative in office, when you have a Republican office, um, that's basically people expect uh, the, the economy to do much better now that Trump's in office, that they don't need to so much worry about another financial crisis, etc. Never mind the last one happened when a Republican was in office. But, you know, that's another thing that people forget about that. Yes, I think silver and gold demand went up in 2008, 2009 because of the financial crisis, because of um, because of, of the recession itself. And, and um, he wanted to use it as a hedge. I was like, great. I mean, it's great to see people moving into this. I've seen so many other stories of people that have been in cryptocurrencies over the last year, and they're being somewhat disciplined in, in the sense that they put a thousand dollars in. Let's say made, they made five thousand or ten thousand or whatever. They're taking a majority of that and putting it into precious metals because they know they know that this cryptocurrency, that a lot of these cryptocurrencies are just in a speculative bubble. They don't believe in these over the long term. They're not going to hold a, you know, if they put in a thousand, it goes up to 10,000. They're not going to keep that $10,000 in there. They're going to take most of it out and leave some in there to, to continue investing in cryptocurrencies. So I think this trend is definitely going to change. I certainly think that the price trend over the last couple of years, kind of silver and gold trading in a range, I think that's going to change as well, especially in the case of gold, we've seen continually have uh, lower and or sorry higher and higher lows in each of these kind of cycles um, silver i think also has a very bright future in 2018 because of uh, the silver gold ratio being so high i think that is going to snap back much lower it's close to close to 80 to 1 right now um, i think it's going to go much lower to 65 60 to 1 but it could go much much lower than that and i think it should be much much lower than that it might take time um, but but we've already seen that uh since I t started talking about this a couple weeks ago about silver heading higher, we've already seen it m make a move up from, I think, uh, mid-15s, mid-15, 60, 15, 70, 
all the way up to where it is today, something like 1720. So that's encouraging. Um, but again, main talk of this video, why have so many investors given up on silver in 2017? Um, it, it's been a rough year. I've seen a lot of people just from comments giving up on silver because because they it, it hasn't performed as they'd expect it to. It you know I think a lot of people expect that as soon as they get into an asset that should be valued much higher, 